We now share with you, ladies and gentlemen, a short film on the Hindu Center. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. A nation is born, brimming with promise, democracy at its best. The achievement we celebrate today is but a step and opening of opportunity to the greater triumphs and achievements that await us. But in recent years, the challenges have been mounting. Increasing cynicism about democratic institutions and political processes. Rapidly declining fate in the system. Long years ago, we lay the fist with destiny, and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge. To renew India's tryst with destiny, the Hindu group presents a bold initiative. From a tradition built, from a reputation earned as India's most trusted media group comes the Hindu Center for Politics and Public Policy. It has a singular mission, to restore public confidence in the democratic process. The center will revisit constitutional concepts to evaluate their continuing validity, examine issues of politics and governance, probe public policy and institutional failures. Provide a platform to address issues for the public good and a healthy democracy. The center will actively promote dialogue and debate and hold track two type roundtables for internal reconciliation. Research and findings will be made available through print media and the internet. The Hindu Center for Politics and Public Policy aims to create genuine stakeholders in India's democracy and empower citizens to influence public policy. Today, the center dedicates itself to the revival of pride and faith in democratic India. Honorable President of India, Sri Pranab Mukherjee, distinguished guests. The famously argumentative Indian has today become the cynical Indian cynical about politicians, policy, public life, and even about the constitutional order itself. The problem is not a begrudging citizenry, but the harsh reality that every government gets the cynicism it deserves. But what do we do to redress this corrosive condition, one that threatens not just the credibility of our governance, but the idea of India itself? As we collectively yearn for the great leaders who can wave away disillusion, and re-enchant our political imagination, it is easy to lose sight of a subtler truth, that great democracies are built and sustained not just by great leaders, but by the steady, painstaking work in a quieter tranche, a tranche where urgent social problems are researched with rigor, where the word debate signifies something more than a barrage of pre-rehearsed TV sound bites, where policy ideas are tested and refined on the basis of hard-won evidence, with an eye towards the greater common good. It is in these quieter corridors of political thinking that a society begins to create the self-knowledge that it needs, expands its range of practical policy options, and begins to unravel its dilemmas. <clears throat> what usefully can we say of Maoist unrest and despair in large parts of our countryside 
if we do not grasp the administrative abstentions and state failures in these regions? How can we debate the utility of reservations as a social justice tool when we have such patchy data on its effects? What can we say about who indulges and who benefits from corruption when we have investigated so little of its workings? Much of what we try as policy is based on little evidence. We need more than ever spaces where evidence and truth can lead us to policy choices, not where perceived offense and fear incite calls to arrest unconventional ideas. Without such incubatory spaces for independent inquiry, our political ideas will remain as wishful, our political realities as arid, and our responses to a concerned citizenry as hollow as they are today. And make no mistake, the, the, our cynicism is not an Indian character flaw. It is a product of intellectual frustration. Frustration at a world made opaque to citizens, where they cannot ever be sure what the policeman, the teacher, the doctor, the bureaucrat, the elected official will do, because they cannot be sure to whom these authorities are truly responsible. We have intellectually disenfranchised our fellow citizens, and a frank recognition of where we now stand is the first step towards re-inclusion. It could not, therefore, be more right that India's respected newspaper of national record, published by the great house of Kasturi and Sons, has chosen this moment to create the Hindu Center for Public Policy, Politics and Public Policy. It will support with full intellectual freedom investigations into our changing society and politics. From its home in the South, it will place its findings in the public sphere for scrutiny and debate and to improve our public choices and outcomes. The work of the Hindu Center must speak not only to government, but to academics and the media, to the corporate world and to activists, to the establishment and to the disaffected, and above all, to us as citizens. For we are past the time when government in its arrogance could credibly claim that it knows best. But we need also to move beyond the current modish contempt for government to be found among many corporate leaders as also the condescension of intellectuals. These circles of mutual disdain damage the prospects for effective policy. At a time when the Indian Republic is in profound need of renewal, when we need to reinvigorate our institutions, remind ourselves of our founding principles, when we face, that is, big and daunting tasks, we need to re rediscover the primacy of policy, the smaller, measurable steps by which a society moves towards high ideals. For it is only if citizens can sense that movement in their everyday lives and struggles that the ideals embodied in our Constitution will appear as worth sustaining. The idea of India was never, as some cynics have claimed, an ideology. At heart, it was an experimental idea, an experiment like no other in what a nation could be. Born in testing circumstances, it was an idea that will survive and strengthen through further testing. We need to treat it as such, a living, evolving idea, not backward-looking, not defensive of old principles. As we strengthen and deepen the spaces for independent policy thinking, we quietly but firmly strengthen the possibility that we can self-correct and become a fairer, less divided nation so redeeming, not wholly or in full measure, but quite tangibly, the promise of our Constitution. Thank you. Good morning. Dr. Malini Patsarthi, Director the Hindu Center, Sri and Ravi, Director Kosturi and Sons Limited, Sri and Ram, Director Kosturi and Sons Limited, Sri Shunil Khilani, Member Board of Advisors, Hindu Center, Sri H. D. Deve Gouda, former Prime Minister, Srimuthi Shonia Gandhi, Dr. Faruk Abdullah, G. K. Bhashan, L. K. Adbani, Dr. Karan Singh, senior political leaders, ministers, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a privilege for me to be present on the occasion of formal inauguration of the Hindu Center for Politics 
and public policy. We require some centers where there would be dialogue, there will be discussions, and where we can address in an objective manner from different perspectives how to address the ills and problems with which we are confronted. As while introducing the subject, Mr. Kilani has very correctly pointed out that the frustration which we see today is not only confined to one territorial entity, it spreads all over the world. In our younger days, when India also started its tryst with democratic destiny, constitutions were framed. We were taught that a sense of democracy is 3D, debate and discussion, dissent, and finally decision. As a member of parliament, when I entered into parliament in the late 60s, and I had the privilege of serving this great institution, I'm sorry for sharing my personal perception, but at the same time, I think perhaps I can share it with you, with this distinguished gathering, with the objective that I would like to have a very serious discussion and perhaps the center, which is just now being inaugurated, can be the most appropriate forum to do that. We were told by our teacher of political science that three Ds are essentials for democracy, that is debate and discussion, dissension, and finally decision. And when I retired from parliament on the day of my election as president to this office, I found there is another D which has in, <laughs> injected in between, that is disruption. And disruption of the proceedings of the house, on the other hand, simply we cannot brush aside that it is irrelevant, it is not necessary because there are persons who are doing it, they are equally members of the parliament, they are equally responsible political personalities. Therefore, is it not time for us to find out